once in a while, Wizards of the Coast does something so mind-bogglingly stupid that I can't help but just actively laugh about it. And today, my friends, that's what we're going to be talking about. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. It is a terrible day to be a Magic Arena player. I guess yesterday was an even worse day to be a Magic Arena player. Now, if you watched the videos that I put out yesterday, I guess the Secret Lair video isn't relevant, but if you watched the video that I put out earlier yesterday, one of the things I covered in my little like news update about what was going on was the Momir event that's happening on Arena, right? So basically what's going on is to make sure we're all on the same page and we all understand really the magnitude of what has happened here because it's it's like epic level boneheadery, okay? <laughs> so I've got to lay the groundwork here. First of all, take a look at the world we're living in right now and realize that in the majority of places in the world, you can't go and physically play in magic tournaments. Yes, you can get together with friends or whatever, but in a lot of the world, you can't sit down to play physical magic. And we've all been feeling that loss. Now, Wizards of the Coast initially came up with a concept to kind of help smooth over the situation, which I thought was a nice little token effort on their part, right? They did a few things. They sent out like mystery booster boxes, which was actually really nice to the LGSs. That was like a big thumbs up move, credit where credit is due, right? And then something else they did that kind of feels like it flopped, maybe it didn't in your area, is the FNM initiative, right? So normally you would have your Friday Night Magic events occurring at the game store, but because you can't go to the game store, now Friday Night Magic's canceled. So what Wizards of the Coast did was they put a special Friday Night Magic event into Arena. And understand, Arena is the easiest way to play Magic the Gathering. Asterisk in the air, all the bugs removed or whatever. Yes, MTGO exists. It is the older platform. It has literally every Magic card. It plays like Magic. Unfortunately for MTGO, it feels really clunky. Like one thing they have done well with Arena I mean, it doesn't function well, but the one of the things conceptually about Arena that if it actually worked the way it was supposed to 100% would be great, is that Arena is very visually striking. Like MTGO is very bland and uninspired looking, right? So that's just the nature of the beast, right? Doing, doing it the way they did it, it is what it is. I had fun playing on MTGO in the past, but I recognize that Arena is far more attractive. Simply just even the backgrounds that we get to play on, right? Where you have the whole, like, look at this terrain, and they're updated with each set, and there's sometimes little interactive Easter eggs, like the Ravnica one, where you could break down the statue of Bolas, smashing the wings off, and make the Parhelion fire its laser beam, and send the Azorius bat signal into the air. That's all fun little fiddly nonsense that doesn't need to be there, but does add an extra aspect to Arena. So Arena does have some nice visual level aspects to it. And on top of that, MTGO requires that you pay to be able to play it really, right? Like you have to buy an account and then you have to buy booster packs and everything else. With Arena, you have two options. You can certainly buy things or you can play for free. So with that plus the push that Wizards of the Coast has made, Arena is the go-to digital format. And when the paper format isn't around, then the go-to digital format really becomes it. This is what Magic... Playing a lot of Magic the Gathering games that aren't just like kitchen table games are happening on Arena. Or were. I mean, things are getting worse over there. But regardless, you get the idea, right? This is where everybody goes to have their, their Magic experiences mainly now. So the FNM events were created where it's a really simple idea. They're supposed to be tied to your local game store where you participate in the event and then you send a screenshot to your local game store, you go and get in their Discord or their Facebook group and you go, hey, I played in the FNM and it, it's kind of like a way to keep it still tied to the store and make the store a part of the deal, right? right? And stores can even charge for these events and give out prizes and stuff. So there is this kind of like intermixing that works half decently in that regard and conceptually, 
it's a great idea. So the stores get still some interaction with their customers. People still get to play magic with their local friends because you can even like arrange tournaments where it's basically because you have the direct challenge, the store organizer can basically you're playing you, you're playing you. So you can actually simulate tournaments as well on top of uh, just playing in the actual FNM event itself. You've got multiple different options, but either way, the FNM event results in the store having reward codes to give you for posting the picture, but also offers you up just two rares. So even if you're somebody who doesn't have a local store you're connected to, you can get engaged with the Friday Night Magic event. And each of those events gives you two standard rares. That's the equivalent of opening two booster packs. Now those rares don't have duplicate protection, which kind of feels a little bit like, hey guys, come on, why, why are you doing us like this? Give us a rare we don't already have. It doesn't feel good to win and just be given 20 gems unless you happen to have everything. And that tends to not be people who are happy to grind out one extra rare in those events, right? So those rewards don't matter to the people who spend a bunch of money on it. They only matter to the people who don't spend a bunch of money on it and like the rewards. So why are you like, why are you taking it in this way from those people when you could just give them a rare they didn't have that would have more of an impact? But that that's a minor thing. For me, it's like, that's a way to improve the event, but nothing to get upset about. But like I said, yesterday's video, I talked about the Momir event, okay? Now the Momir event is an amazing concept. It actually originated from MTGO. The idea behind it is that you get to play with randomized creatures. Basically like you pay three mana, you're gonna get a random creature from every creature that's programmed in at that casting cost. And it can be any color, right? So if you spend four mana, any creature that costs four mana in the game, whether it's four generic mana, two blue, two red, like whatever the combination is, it just puts them out, you get tokens. And so it's this crazy random, like I love, I love Momir so much. I encouraged people in my video to go and try it. So what happens is Wizards canceled the Momir event, which is mind boggling. A bunch of people are really frustrated about it. That's not the only thing they're frustrated about. But anyways, the Momir event is particularly frustrating for people because Momir has been used on Arena a number of times already. And each time they did it before, there weren't any stability problems unless one happened, one event happened that I wasn't aware of because I play in the Momir events and they all went as normal. I mean, you had your normal level of Arena bugs, whatever they were across the board, but it wasn't specifically like Momir being buggy. But at this point, Momir, this iteration that they released, Momir was so buggy that apparently you could just click on the Momir avatar, then cancel out doing that, and it would just tie the game. So anybody who knew about that could just exploit it to never lose in the event. And there were all kinds of other bugs or whatever to the point where Wizards just took down the Momir event. They just took it down. Like people are like, this event's so buggy, please fix the event, please fix the event. And instead, they just took the event away. Like people are like, please fix the Momir event. And they're just like, just, just take, just take the event away. I picture it like there's there's this kid playing with their Game Boy and the batteries have died on it. And uh, <laughs> they're calling out to their mom, my batteries are dead. This is an old reference now because you just plug everything in. But anyways, there's these like my batteries, the batteries of my Game Boy are dead, mom. And mom keeps hearing it and she shows up and instead of replacing the batteries, she just takes the Game Boy away and goes, you can't complain about the Game Boy. You don't have a Game Boy. So it just walks off with the Game Boy. And it's like, mom, what are you doing? Like that's Wizards of the Coast here. They didn't fix Momir. They just took the event away. And if you were in the event, you're probably thinking, well, what did they do? Just give people who were in the event the rares and stuff that they, they would have got if they continued to play and win? Nope. They, they didn't give anybody anything. Nobody got anything. The, the automatic response to this should have been cancel the event, issue two random rares to every player. What the, where's the bad move in that one? Just go, hey, you know, we had a problem with the Momir event, but everybody gets the rares. Then anybody who missed the event is just gonna be like, oh, okay, well that sucks, I don't get to play the event, which is the main draw of it, but at least, hey, I got the rares and I didn't miss out on those, right? And then the people who didn't even know about it or whatever just pop in and get two rares and it's nothing but goodwill. <laughs> they just took the event down. <laughs> they just took the event down and didn't say anything, like literally, they just, this is what they tweeted. Momir's plans for this week's FNM at home event were a little too experimental. So we've disabled the event. A little too experimental. They've done a bunch of Momir events. There's no excuse for it. Instead, 
Play what you want while we notify participating stores. That's it. That's it. That's all they said. They're basically just like, hey, uh, we're going to let the stores know this event didn't happen. Does I mean, at the very least, I guess you can get the code from the store. So let's be fair. Give them a tiny bit of credit for that. But the way they handled it with all the players, everybody should, at least the people in the event still, should have just been issued like two rares, whatever. Like, what are they doing over there? The arena programming is so bad that, oh my God, guys, the other thing that happened that was like a big moment of note, because the crazy thing about arena is it's buggy with like every update. And now it's insanely buggy. Like there were so many errors. I've played arena so much less than usual. I log into arena daily to play my big green tower, farm up some gold, maybe do some drafting. You know what I mean? Like I am actively an arena player, but for the last like couple days, it's just been, oh God, like this is, this is brutal. So I haven't been using it as much. Anybody who's been using it, you all know about that pause now. At the end of every game, there's just this pause. We have to sit there and wait for it to finally go click to continue. And like, it'll say click to continue on screen. You'll be clicking, come on, let's go, let's go. It just pauses. It's this big interminable pause and you have to sit there and wait. So you go through the pause, then you've got to go through the load up screen where after every single game, they need to run the line across to tell you, yeah, another one on your daily grind. Keep grinding, punk, keep grinding. Like it's just, there's a bunch of tedious extra fr frappery in there and it becomes highlighted when you're forced to arbitrarily wait after each game and when people forfeit rapidly in games and on top of that, when the games are buggy so it's hard to get a good game going in the first place, it all compounds into a, uh, into a sandwich of frustration and I'm sitting there taking bites out of it until I go, no, I'm not gonna eat this anymore. But anyways, those are normal level arena concerns that we regularly deal with. Let's talk about what happened with the jumpstart Phyrexian Swamp, because this is mind-blowing. The Jumpstart Phyrexian Swamp is really, really, really cool. Like, I hope, I, I'm not sorry, I had hoped to open one when I opened a box of Jumpstart. It's basically a normal swamp, except instead of a mana symbol, it has Phyrexian writing on it, okay? Now, that's really, really cool if you're an old-school Magic player and into all this and the Yawgmoth and the Urza and all that stuff, like the lore I cover on my other channel talking about that stuff. Anyways, if you're into that, the Swamp is, like, the best, right? So Wizards knew people were really going to want it, so they made them really hard to get, both in paper and in the digital Jumpstart events. So people had to play in Jumpstart event after Jumpstart event after Jumpstart event. I know I played in a bunch. I didn't get, I didn't get the Swamp, right? Because once you unlock it on Arena you can use it as all your swamps, which is really sweet compared to Paper Magic, where you have to, you want 20 swamps like this? Go get 20 copies. Ooh, good luck with that, right? So, Arena's cool for that, but the problem is, is there's either a glitch or a programming change or whatever that removed all the Phyrexian text from the swamp, and now it just has the black mana symbol like every other swamp. So people spent a ton of money and time acquiring these things or just a bunch of built up in-game resources they had saved for this purpose. Either way, it's a lot of their time or money that got sunk into chasing these Phyrexian swamps that are now not Phyrexian swamps, they're just a swamp with a picture of Phyrexia on it, which is wildly different. Now, I do suspect that's a glitch. That's probably not an intentional choice. It could just be that the programming is so buggy that that Phyrexian Swamp was giving them problems and they, they had to change it while they tried to figure out how to work it into their programming. So, I mean, Arena's a nightmare. The, the players of Arena have a genuine right to be frustrated. Like, it, it, Wizards is not putting enough due care into what they're doing in terms of their programming and whatever, and they're just releasing a sloppy mess that they expect you to, like, do a $50 pre-order. In fact, do two $50 pre-orders for all of this stuff. Buy the Mastery Pass, get these tokens, get the pet, get all this stuff. Give us $100 before the set even comes out. 100 American dollars. We're not gonna make sure you have a stable platform to play it on. We're not gonna make sure we even maintain the, 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 the thing that you pay for. You know how you chased after this one cosmetic item? We're just gonna, well, abruptly let it change. That's that's your problem. So what, we've already got your money. Like. There's, it's, it's a genuinely frustrating scenario, but the Momir, the Momir part just makes me laugh. The fact that they were like, it's buggy, right? Then Momir's canceled. Wait, can you just make it work like the previous Momir events? No, 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 no. That's not how this works. 
You guys have a problem with Malmir, we're taking it away. We're turning the car around and we're going home. No, no, it's too late. It's too late. We're going home. Give me that Game Boy. Give me that Game Boy. All right. So, my friends, that's what's going down. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like what I'm doing here, like, comment, subscribe. It's all great for the channel. If you love what I'm doing, jump on my Patreon. And other than that, I'll toss up a link to my newest lore video, as well as a link to the Welcome Booster opening on my other channel. So, thanks for coming by, everybody. See you next time.